Good morning. Okay, I really wanted to show you all how I refresh my hair. I slept in it in like a bun thing kind of, and then I did just take a shower, so I, it wasn't a bun like this. It was like not as great of a bun, but then I put it up in a bun for my shower. So I'm just gonna pull it down. And it obviously is like, you know, like this. So let me sit you somewhere. And I just spritz water all over. Dampish. And then I just take my microfiber towel again and I just scrunch the water like reactivates the product that you already have in your hair so I don't add any more product and the same as yesterday I just let it dry okay today can't believe we're already at day 10 down here Master Origins Columbia. It's a coffee. I've had this one before, so I'm actually not gonna have this today. Just a regular coffee pod, an intensity of five. I think I'm going to have the double espresso that I really like. This is the Bianco Leggero that I already always talk about. So this one's really good if you just got an espresso or you're wanting to try out some pods. This is my favorite to make a latte with at the moment. It looks like whipped cream. How freaking cute does this look like? Cutest cup of coffee ever. Bye, Alvin. See you later. Did daddy go to work? Daddy had to go to work? Yeah. Okay, it is 9.58, so I need to start my reading sprint for Patreon Oops. and I'm going to build my puzzle and listen to Saving Noah while I'm well obviously reading on my reading sprint so that's gonna be really really fun. <laughs> Eleven fifty three. I just finished with my reading sprints on Patreon. Some of my leftover Zupa Toscana soup, so that way I can eat that. But I finished my book and I made a huge progress in my puzzle. First with the puzzle, I totally finished the end, like the whole edge and stuff. And then I have this like florist right here, the bookworm right here, and then I'm starting on the on the people. So like, there's a person here. A person here, this is a dog, a person here, a child and a person. Oh, this probably goes right there. Oh, look at me. Um, and then a person, a person, and another child. So that is really cool. But the best part is I finished Saving Noah. Finished Saving Noah. This book, five stars, okay? Five freaking stars. And I think it's going on one of my favorite books for this year. This is not going to be for everybody. And I am actually very surprised 
that this is just a fictional book written by Lucinda Berry. Like, crazy to me. Graham thinks that he's getting something because I sat down right next to his thing. Shh, quiet, I'm talking. Let me try and explain what this book is about to make you all wanna read it, but also in a way that you won't think that I am a crazy person. So this is about Noah and Noah is a teenager who touched six year olds at school. So he molested children. They, he ends up like telling his mom, he's like an A-roll honor student and like, you know, just has always been like the perfect child. And he ends up telling his mom about it. And of course, like, you know, he has to go get help. He has to go to court. He, you know, doesn't want to be tried. Like they, they explain like, you know, not being tried as an adult compared to being tried like as a juvenile and the differences, what that makes, how long this is on your record for. Like a lot of stuff that I didn't know that actually was very interesting. Like in this like, you know, therapy, like they're trying to fix him, you know, that kind of thing. They do this like shocking factor where they'll show you like pictures. Like every time you like see a child and you start getting aroused, like they shock you. So that way you are like brain associates that with like something bad that's happening, not something that's like, ar you know, arousing happening. It turns out that like he's actually had this problem for a while and it's, it's deeper than it actually is. And so I don't want to give everything away. It starts discussing like the difference between a child molester compared to a pedophile and how pedophiles are actually like according to this book, I, I haven't done any research, but according to this book, pedophiles are born that way, that it's just like, that is who they, they are attracted to young people, just as like, you know, someone's attracted to a female or attracted to a male or whatever it would be. There's really no cure for that. And it's just, that is how you were born. I mean, that is just what is going on in this book. That's what they are saying in this book. I'm pretty sure Lucinda Berry has like, yeah, she is a, oh, sorry, she's a doctor. She is a trauma psychologist and leading researcher in childhood trauma. She uses her clinical experience to create disturbing psychological thrillers, blurring the lines between fiction and nonfiction. Oh my gosh, this is why I love this book so much and I love her writing. She enjoys taking her readers on journeys through the dark recesses of the human psyche. Yes, so that is why I like this because it, it even says on the back, it says, we forgive murderers, not pedophiles. And so what this book did was it made me so conflicted because part of me felt bad for Noah because he, he doesn't want to live. He wants to kill himself. He knows that he is a monster. He knows that what he did was wrong, but like, what are the options for him? Like there, you know, if there's no cure, if there's no way to fix it, he said he, you know, he tried so many things. And so he was saying it's like a cancer patient, like a lot of cancer patients, because there's not really a fix all treatment that they commit suicide, but they are viewed as like, you know, people still like them. People are sad that they want to die. Whereas if you're a pedophile, like, even though you kind of were dished out this thing that you know you're dished out cancer or you had no control over you're dished out being a pedophile according to the book he's like well i just want to die but like you go down like being as being a monster like no one feels bad for you they're like yeah totally kill yourself um there's a big twist at the end that i didn't see coming that i really appreciated and this book just made me like it made me really sick because it is very graphic it made me feel like, I don't know if you've watched 13 Reasons Why, but um, that one episode that like everyone was talking about and I thought that I could handle it and I like couldn't handle it. Like that was really, really graphic for me and it was very like disturbing to me. And I was kind of, I was actually like depressed for like a week after watching that. That's how I felt about this book too. Like this book had so many emotions for me and it made me sick, it gave me goosebumps, it made me, you know, disturbed, it it made me sad, it made me emotional, like everything that you could feel like while reading a book is, well, not happy, I guess. I wasn't happy reading this book, but um, it had so many emotions and I love that in books. And I think I'm, I'm claiming Lucinda Berry as one of my favorite authors of all time because 
I have loved, I think this is the second book that I've re read by her, but I absolutely have loved both of the books that I've read by her and this one especially, I really loved that like, you know, between fact and, and fiction kind of thing. And knowing now that she's a trauma psychologist and she's done her research for this stuff, that makes it even like better. Like I'm obsessed. And so I cannot wait. I have so many other Lucinda Berry books that I was gonna read this month. And I'm so excited now. Like I can't wait to read her other books. Because this book was so good, like starting in chapter two, I had decided to um, do it as a buddy read on Patreon. So if you wanted to hear all my thoughts about all the chapters and talk spoilers with me and everything like that, then you can join my Patreon. It's for um, tiers two and above. Let me get my soup out here. My Zupa Toscana that I made the other day. By the way, I never got to tell you all. Alvin loved the soup. He said it's like one of the best soups I've ever made. He just absolutely loved it. But I'm going to eat this. Oh, I need to open. I got two packages in the mail while I was doing my reading sprints. So let me open those. Okay, so definitely one of these I believe is the one that I ordered from Amazon. Oh, this is not what I got, I don't think. This is a gift. <laughs> from my friend Shay. She's a Merry Christmas ho. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Oh my gosh. This is a greenery sticker set. I love this, this is so cute. 25 sticker sheets. Oh my gosh. <gasps> These are amazing. Gosh, these are so beautiful and they're by month. <laughs> okay, so we have January, February. Oh my gosh, I love these. March, April. I love these color themes. May, June. July, August, September, October, November, December. Oh my gosh, and then there's like, there's just other ones. So there's like, like just, regular planning ones. I love these. I wonder if these go with each one. No, I think these are just actual planning ones. So like, yeah. There's like shopping list. Here's like a diet one. Here's like paydays and pay bills. Bank ones, doctor ones. Books to read, first day of school, bridal shower, wedding, shopping list, organizing. Oh, I love these little icons. Wow, this is an amazing sticker pack. I would definitely get this like every year. Wow, thank you so much, Shay. This is amazing and I absolutely love this. Okay, next up. This is probably the book that I have ordered. Yes. So this is the, uh, it starts with the egg fertility cookbook that I wanted to get. It's a hundred Mediterranean inspired recipes. And this is supposed to go along with the book um, regarding IVF. Oh, it is kind of sad. There's no pictures in it. So like, these are the recipes and there's no pictures. <laughs> But I'll see, I'll see what it's like. If I don't like it, I'll, I'll send it back to Amazon. But I was really interested because I wanna be able to eat and get my egg quality up. It says, even though I was just 27, I was diagnosed with diminished ovarian reserve and told that our chances of conceiving through IVF were depressingly low. Readers of the book, it starts with the egg, will know what happened next. I put my training in molecular biology and biochemistry to work and dove into all the latest science, scientific research on what can be done to improve egg quality and fertility. I saw a dramatic turnaround 
in just a few months. Ultrasounds and lab tests showed that my fertility was no longer on par with someone in their 40s, but more in line with my actual age of 27. That's awesome. I actually do have, like they said, I, um, I'm at like a really high end of like making eggs and stuff like that. They said that normally, I guess the scale is a, is a one, like the average is a one, and they said I'm at a nine. But that's a big part in how many embryos you get, and especially since I want to get a decent amount of them, so that way I can freeze them because like the hardest part is doing like the retrieval and I don't wanna have to do that again. So I want to like have really good quality ones, but then also like that helps increase your chances of them fertilizing and doing things like that. Plus I'm gonna make Alvin just eat like this stuff kind of with me to hopefully increase his sperm count. Our subsequent IVF cycle produced 19 good quality embryos, eventually leading to my two sons. That is awesome. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this book and the other one, well, this is mostly just a cookbook, but to read the book that goes along with that. Gosh, I wanna do so many things today. And I definitely know I'm not gonna have enough time. It's already 12 o'clock. Oh. I am just so in love with these stickers though. This is really good soup. Real quick, let's see what today's tea is in case I wanna drink it while I edit. Today is day 10. Let's see. Okay, it looks like it has Christmas trees and brittle and stuff. It is, there you go, fireside mocha. Has like Christmas trees, chocolate, it looks like caramel. I don't know if I'm gonna like this one. I actually made the dark chocolate orange, I think maybe yesterday, and I did not like it because I don't really like kind of fake chocolate flavored drinks and stuff. It tastes like Tootsie Roll and I don't really like Tootsie Roll. Okay. Mocha s'mores. It's okay, but I literally had to use like the whole entire pack for this little cup because it was just a infusion. There's actually no tea in this one. Okay, how have I been editing my video? No, I have not. <laughs> because I forgot I wanted to do this really fun project of making little like business card type of things, but in order for me to send them in, oh, this is cute, but I don't think it printed correctly. It did not. Okay, we're getting there. We're close. I'm making little like business cards for me to send in the exclusive bookmarks that I'm sending for my Patreon people. And this is really cute. Like this is gonna be the back of them, which is super cute. I won't show you the front, but the front also didn't print correctly. So I need to redo that. I got it. Whoa, super excited. <laughs>
five. And I am very surprised because Alvin did not want to work really long today, but I guess he is going to work really long. I've been drinking sangria. I made dinner. The stuffed peppers are in the oven. I have the salad right here, which I love Olive Garden dressing. When I'm eating like really healthy, I usually just make my own dressing or I'll buy like the Tesemme's. But I love Olive Garden dressing. It's like one of my favorites. I have the oven off because dinner is actually, it's like ready. I was just leaving it in there, which I should probably pull it out because it's probably gonna be too hot. Okay, yeah, look how good this is. So I didn't really follow a recipe, but I definitely saw this somewhere before and I've made it before. So I just cut peppers in half, put them in the oven at 400 degrees with some olive oil and salt, roasted them until they were like soft. That took, I don't know, maybe like 40-ish minutes. And the meat, I just had like random steak and stuff in my freezer. So I cooked it in the Instapot because I was worried it was gonna be tough and I wanted it to be soft. So I did that. I fried up mushrooms and onions in butter. And then I added salt, Worcestershire sauce, and liquid smoke. And then I just added the meat into that after I chopped it up. I think I pressure cooked it for about 30 minutes and then I let it just naturally release. It was like 20 minutes cause I was like doing stuff. <laughs> and then I topped it with provolone cheese. And so this is what it looks like and it looks absolutely delicious. I did put away the dishes in the dishwasher but I still have not done the laundry because I honestly really don't feel like it so I'm not going to do it. I might do it tomorrow, but I mean like the clothes are clean. So like, I can just pull them out of the basket when I need them. I don't know why, laundry is always like the last thing I always ever do. So I have been, I feel like I haven't vlogged a lot today. And I feel like it's just because um, I didn't really do a lot of the things that I wanted to, or I should say, I didn't do a lot of the things that I should have done. I was focusing a lot on Patreon and doing stuff like that. And then I still haven't even edited my video. Like I should have done that, but honestly, I just didn't want to. And I kind of just wanted to like relax and just take my time. I think that's the thing. Like, even though I was still getting stuff done, I was just taking my time to do it. Whereas a lot of the times in order for me to get all the stuff done that I need to get done, I'm just, I'm so rushed. Like, especially yesterday, yesterday I felt so incredibly rushed. Sometimes I just want to like relax and like still do the things that I'm supposed to do, but like on my own time limit, if that makes any sense. I don't even know if I'm making sense. This sangria though, I think I showed you some of it in B-roll. It's very good. It's at Aldi. It's like 10.5% alcohol or something like that. And it's only $4.99 at Aldi. So if you have an Aldi that carries wine, get the sangria. So I am going to be waiting for Alvin to get home. This is my new little lamp. It's kind of really bright though. I need to get like a 40 watt bulb for it because it is way too bright. But I'm gonna be waiting for Alvin to say that he's coming home. Oh, he said about to leave shortly, which is perfect because then dinner is ready. And I do wanna play Sushi Go with him tonight. I feel like that would be really fun for us to kind of like figure out the rules and what to do for that. Oh, I should probably do the wish list giveaway right now. I'm gonna do that now. Okay, here we go. 135 is the amount of wish list that we have. We're gonna generate 32. All right, let me count. One, two. Okay, here we go. We got a winner here. Let's see what we've got. Oh, they never learn. The quiet ones, that one's on my TV. Oh, saving Noah. I just finished that. I'm gonna have to buy that. So good. And it has been ordered. Away the leftovers. Yeah, I was gonna say, get yourself a husband that also cleans up after he eats dinner. Wait, so Alvin said I was a two for two and I made two of his favorite meals this week or that were amazing. He really liked those uh, stuffed peppers.
Is it time for your advent calendar? Yeah? We gotta open two. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> All right, we gotta open nine. Here, I'll do it this way. We gotta do nine, which I figured was gonna be a ball. <laughs> oh, it's a squeaky. Why are you not like other dogs? <laughs> Get that out of my face. Okay, and then today is day 10. <laughs> He's licking his lips already. like you got some crunchy bars, crunchy munchy bars. <laughs> I couldn't get open, but he's over here like. Mm. You gotta sit. You have to sit. He's telling us as close to as possible. Yeah, he is. Are you a good boy? Okay, bye bye. He said, all right, peace. Yeah, those ones are hard, huh? <laughs> Sit. Are you a good boy? You gotta sit. All done. You gotta put it put it away. You like this box, huh? You like their advent calendar? Say hi to all your fans. Yeah, say hi to all your fans. Say thanks for watching. Look at that nice smile. <laughs> Are you snorting for your fans too? <laughs> no, you already had some. You already had them. He said, but man. <laughs> You're all done. <laughs> yeah, he like went the other way around the, ca around the counter. Okay, time for us to try our cheese for the day. Let's hope it's something new. Today is 10. This isn't for you, this is for us. He said, wait. Ooh, okay, this is double, oh, I've never heard of this cheese before. Double Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. <laughs> double Gloucestershire now. Gloucestershire now. Gotta get, bring out my German roots. Double Gloucestershire. Don't you know? It looks kind of like yellowish or orange. That it is. Ready? Oh, you probably don't like that one. That's very sharp. sharp. Mm hmm. Whoa, that's strong. My sister said something about how there's a mustard something or other in here. Haven't gotten to it yet. I guess they're doing theirs out of order. Or maybe they're just all different. Do you want coffee or a latte? I'll coffee. Coffee. Decaffeinated Altigio. 
Altijo is really good. So it's like a decaf espresso, oops, an espresso pod, espresso pod. And then I also have, this is the decaffeinated coffee. It's Malazio. I'd gotten just one of each box to try. I'm not a huge fan of the decaf coffee. It's pretty strong in my opinion, but the uh, espresso is actually really good. this book it starts with the egg um i got to page 121 so i'm like a third of the way through it is really 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 good i really like how in the beginning um the lady that wrote this talks about how she is in her like she was in i think she was 26 actually when she had to do ivf and her chances were really, really low because she had a really low ovarian reserve. So she hardly had any eggs. And she ended up doing a bunch of research and like did a bunch of these different things like supplements and taking things out of her lifestyle and diet and stuff. And she ended up having like the best quality eggs in the whole entire clinic, like was one of the highest of like all of the people that they've ever done. And so like not only did she, they were able to like retrieve a bunch. I think they retrieved like 22 when they thought they were only gonna get a few from her and almost all of them fertilized and like didn't die and stayed healthy and made it to like day five. So I've been really liking this book and I'm excited to just hear all the things that she's going to say in order to like just improve your egg quality and your chances of IVF. So that's what I was reading. Um, I am going to head to bed now. I think we did everything. I think I did all the calendars and I did the wish list item and everything, but tomorrow I close. So I'll be around in the morning time. I'm going to try and edit my videos because I never did edit the video for yesterday. Um, but I also probably really want to read more of this because it's very interesting to me and I also I'm kind of on a time restraint a lot of these things you want to be doing um, within like three months before your IVF and mine's coming up in February so I need to get on it all right that's it I will see you all tomorrow in another video bye everyone